Hey guys, it's Kaz here aka Cats and Camera and today I'm doing my May wrap up. Now I didn't read as much in May as I have in previous months but I did read some great things so I'm not mad about that. So I ended up picking up six things and of those there were three books, two graphic novels and one poetry collection and because there was quite a few little things in there page count came to 1716 for the month. I did give out an array of star ratings this month, normally I just give everything four but I did have quite a mixture this month, I gave out one five star, one two star, I gave out a couple of 3.5 and a 4.5 but yeah let's just get into it, I'm gonna go through these in the order that I read them rather than in star ratings so first of all I read The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and this was a five star for me it was so good. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. It was one of those books that was on my wish list but I wasn't really sure if I would enjoy it very much. I'm not really into historical fiction but at the same time I feel like ancient history is a little bit more than like World War II. So yes I really enjoyed this. This story follows Achilles and Patroclus who are friends and then become more than friends and it goes through their history together. It's just, it was so good. I cried so much at the end, I wasn't sure that it was going to be one of those books for me but then about halfway through I was like, yeah, this is going to destroy me, I already know. And it did. I don't even know what else to say, it's just so good, you should check it out. There's brutal fighting, there's really cute bits, there's pain and anguish but also happiness and yeah it's just it was so good I really enjoyed this five stars next up I read Doll Shaker by Casey Renee Kisser I won this in a Goodreads giveaway I only ever enter giveaways that I feel like it sounds like something I'd really enjoy but unfortunately this was my two star read of this month it just felt really disjointed, it's, it's a poetry book but a lot of them just didn't do anything for me it sounded right up my alley, dark and twisted and a little bit wrong but also humorous but I didn't feel any of those, I think there were two poems in here that I enjoyed the rest of them, some just felt like filler it felt like just rhyming a few words for no reason, filler and other ones I just didn't get any emotional connection to which I felt like I should have done also there's a few pictures throughout here let me just find one so there's a few pictures in here by an artist and first of all I don't really enjoy the art but second of all it looks like they've been drawn about this big and then blown up to fit on the page I don't know if you can tell on the camera but they look really fuzzy like it's a picture that's been stretched a small picture that's been stretched bigger and it just yeah I don't like that I feel like something like that you could have just drawn it bigger and it'd be really in focus and high quality but yeah it just looks like it's been blown up bigger than it was drawn I don't like it but yeah like I say I think there was two in here that I enjoyed I read all of them a few times as well just to see if I could get anything more from reading it again but no, unfortunately not. Next up, as everybody else in the world read this in May, I also did. And that's A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. This, first of all, this is the first book I've ever pre-ordered. But that's because it was only £3.85, brand new. And it was a little bit of an anticlimax for me. I'm not gonna lie. I gave it four stars on Goodread, but Goodread. I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but I think it's more like a three point five. There were bits that I enjoyed, but some of it they just didn't push it to the boundaries that I wanted it to go. I'm gonna talk about a few spoilers here, so mute this video until I put this book down or skip ahead if you can see. So yes, what I didn't enjoy about this. Nobody died. It really, really, really annoyed me that nobody died. It's this massive, massive battle 
And there's no peril, there's no, there's no stress, you're not on the edge of your seat thinking Oh, will they survive or not? It's just so obvious that no one's gonna have anything bad to them Nobody even got a little bit... Well, I suppose Az got hurt a little bit, but the next day was pretty much fine And I thought that was a really big cop out It really was. I loved all the characters in this book I didn't want any of them to die, but someone should have died, at least one The fact that Reese brought back Amran just felt so, such like a slap in the face. She gave up her life to save everybody and then she could just come back anyway. It just, it didn't sit right with me. They should have at least kept Amran dead. But no, it's all, it was too wrapped up and too happily ever after and it was really annoying. And also the fact that these massive demons from another planet, from another planes, the carver, the, bo the bone carver, the weaver and Brixis is his name, the the one that lives in the library. All of them died, but none of our main characters who have got about one fiftieth of the strength of this big evil demon things died. Yet all three of the main baddies, bad, badass demons did. And I just felt like I wanted more from them as well. I wanted to see them actually destroying big parts of the army rather than just offhanded comments. Oh, there's the bone carver who just knocked over 30 people and they died. I wanted more action there. I also felt like the overuse of sex scenes was so weird. It was just so unnecessary. Fair play. I don't mind that there's sex scenes in this book or in this series in general. But there's just so many of them at such unnecessary times and go into so much details and I'm just like, okay, I'm bored. Give me something else. Yes, they're having sex again when everybody's dying around them. Good for them. But I wasn't about that. Also, I know a lot of people have had issue with this, but more being a lesbian or being bisexual or I'm not sure how she would categorise herself because she still sleeps with men but she prefers women. I'm not totally mad with that. I'm I'm happy that Sarah J Mass has included LGBT people, or fairies, not people are they, in her story, but it just came out such left field. I was watching Livy's video, I'll link it below, the talk about this, and as I was commenting I was just sprouting loads of stuff, and it came to me that I felt like any of the other main characters being on the spectrum would have been more believable and would have had more weight behind it. Like, for instance, Azrael or Cassian, could have very easily have had relationships with men because they were in this Illyrian camp for most of their life where no women were. It's not unheard of that they might have got with guys there and could have in passing met them when they went to the Illyrian camp and it would have been an offhand, oh yeah that happened, it's not a big deal. Or if for instance Nessa, Nessa is so angry at everything and I felt like it would have been more likely if she had some sort of inner turmoil, inner homophobia towards herself if she was a lesbian. That seemed more likely. She could have hated herself and it could have shown that the human world was still had all this hate against anybody not straight and that would have worked with all the other random little fairy tidbits that we got the bisexual and we got the other gay couple and we had the lesbian couple as well in the fairy sort of area so that would have made sense if the fairies were all fine with different sexualities but the human still had something against them and that's why she kept it to herself or even if Elaine was just like oh sorry bro sorry Lucia I'm not gonna be your mate I'm gay I prefer women I would have enjoyed that a lot more and that would have shown that the mating bond is not always a hundred percent definitely gonna work which they touched at and probably will in the next books and then of course we have Amran who isn't even a fairy or a human she too is some sort of demon from a different realm so why is it so impossible that she would be just everything that she would be pansexual she would like anybody or she would be asexual she would like nobody or why does she feel like she has a gender she's just this this demon that's not necessarily constricted to being a woman or a man 
anything about Amran could have been on the spectrum of sexuality or of gender but she was a straight female I feel like I've gone, over, gone on about this for way too long on a wrap up rather than a single video so if you want to hear or if you want to chat about this in the comments below then start a conversation because I have a lot of feelings about this I did enjoy it but there was also a lot that was wrong and a lot that could have been improved but yeah I'm glad that Sojo Mass included an array of different characters of different sexualities but I feel like it could have been handled better I guess Hello to anyone returning that went past the big spoilery bit there that's probably way too long but yes after A Court of Wings and Ruin I read Runaways Volume 1. This is by Brian K. Vaughan and Adrian Alfona or Alfona and this one I gave 3.5. It's, it's, I enjoyed it, it's a nice sort of introduction but this is basically about a group of kids, it's middle grade, it's a middle grade graphic novel, it's about this group of kids that basically find out that their parents are super villains but this volume is mostly introducing all the characters, finding out that bit of the plot. So I enjoyed it but there's not enough of the storyline happened yet. But I do have the next two volumes and I am looking forward to getting to those two. Here's the sort of artwork in here. Nice, very bold colours, really simple. And like I say, this is suitable for everyone. I read a lot of graphic novels that are mature readers because there's a lot of language and blood and stuff but this one is fair for anyone so if anybody or you know of anyone that's trying to get into graphic novels and comics that are a bit young give this one a go it's really enjoyable. Next I picked up The Trials of Apollo The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. This one I gave four stars I loved Apollo in the Heroes of Olympus series so I was really looking forward to seeing stuff from his point of view I don't know whether it's because I read the Heroes of Olympus a little while ago but I felt like this Apollo was slightly different but maybe that's just because it's from his point of view so we hear all of his whining and moaning I've, I've seen people comment about not necessarily liking this because of the selfishness that Apollo has but he's a god of course he just thinks of himself but there was, a, there was some nice twists and turns in this this is basically about Apollo obviously and he was cast out of the heavens and thrown onto earth and is now occupied a 16 year old boy's body and he has none of his powers and he's trying to figure out how to get them back and yeah it's a really enjoyable story we meet some new characters we also see some old characters that are fan favourites Obviously Percy Jackson appears in here. Someone who I enjoy more than Percy. We see Nico and we see Will. I enjoyed the new character, the main character that we got introduced to in here as well. And I'm looking forward to carrying this series on. And last but not least, Chew Volume 11. I got two and this is by John Lehman and Rob Guillory. This is a second to last volume. I gave this 4.5. Some big things happen in this book we join back up with some old characters coming back into sort of the main storyline some big stuff happens we see some more new powers that we've not seen before in the other issues there's a pretty cool power in here you'll know what it is when you read it also in the back of this we have the chew half of the chew and revival mashup that they did basically Revival is another series and they did it so the two characters met up with the Revival characters and that's a nice little extra bit of content there I'm really looking forward to the next one of course it's the last one and I'm sure shit's gonna go down I'm looking forward to it here's the artwork again I've shown this so many times Trying to get stuff that's not so spoilery. Check out you.
So yeah, there is my May wrap up. I read a few, quite a few things that I really enjoyed. One that I didn't so much, but because it was only little, it didn't really dampen my reading experience for this month. Tell me below what you read this month. Obviously, if you want to have some Course of Wings of Ruin chats, then let's start that. I have a lot, a lot of feelings. I almost did a video about it, but I thought so many people are doing videos about this book and I know it's kind of I should have done it, but I just felt like everyone was doing it, so who wants to know my opinions? But if you do, then let's chat. If this is your first video and you enjoy what you see, then please check out some of my other things. And if you carry on to enjoy them, then please subscribe, that would be awesome. Anyway guys, I will see you in a few days with another video. Bye. One more thing.